For the past two weeks, I've shown how you can set up scrolling by using different techniques with the X-Sheet. Well, today I'd like to show you how you can use two of OpenTunes' effects to set up scrolling much, much easier. Hello friends, and welcome to the final of three videos showing how you can set up scrolling in OpenTunes. And if you missed the first two, there's a link to them in the description. But today we're going to use the effects, and specifically two of the tile effect nodes. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren, and on this channel I have OpenTunes tutorials, news videos, collaborations and animations. So subscribe to not miss them, and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating in OpenTunes, check out the other videos on my channel, including plenty of beginner videos. And as this video is quite long, I've got links in the description to each section of this tutorial, so you can skip to the parts you want to see. So today's video is prompted by a discussion on the OpenTunes Discord channel, where Rodney posted this small demo showing the effect in action. And here you can see the scrolling working in all directions. But let me show you how you can set it up to use it as an alternative way to set up horizontal or vertical scrolling. So to start off, let's take a quick look at how you access the effects. And you do this on the FX Schematic panel. Now you might already have this panel showing in one of the rooms you have, so click through them up here to check if you have it. And I've already set up my own room with a schematic in it, to make accessing it easier. And if you want to add it to one of your rooms, go to the room where you want to add it, and then show it from the Windows menu. Just select Schematic. Then either use it floating like this, or drag it to where you'd like to dock it. When it's ready to dock, you'll see this red line. Just release and the panel stays docked. And if it won't dock, check that the lock room panes tick box is unticked. And when you finish setting up your docking, I'd advise that you re-tick it to stop you from accidentally undocking the panels. And finally, you might want to also use the function editor to check out or change any keys set for an effect. And that I keep in another room. But for scrolling today, we won't be setting keys on the effect, just setting it up and letting it do all the work. The schematic panel has two views. The FX schematic, as it's showing at the minute, you can see in the top left it says that. Or if you press the button at the bottom right, you change to the stage schematic, where you set up the connections between the columns. But today, we want the FX. And there's three ways to add effects. The first way is to click the FX button on the bottom toolbar here, and that brings up the FX pop-up. And then you select the effect to add, and choose insert, add or replace. And obviously you can only replace an effect if you've got one selected already. And the second way is to right click on the background of the effect schematic and choose add effects. And from there you see the same list of effects and just select one that adds it ready to use. And because we don't have a node selected when you right click, you don't have an insert or replace option, just add effect. And by adding them with this option, you then need to connect the effect up. And the effects are connected by clicking and dragging from the right hand side of one node to the left hand side of the other, to the right hand side of the blur node to the left hand side of the X sheet. And to remove the connections between the nodes, you can click and drag over the node to let highlights and tap the delete key. And to remove the effect, you can simply select the node and hit the delete key and the connections automatically join up. But the third way to add an effect, and the quickest way to setting one up, is to right click on the node itself that you want the effect to add on. And this can be the column or another effect. So if you right click on a column, you've got the option to insert or add an effect. But if we insert an effect, that inserts the node in between the line that's already connected there. So again, if we right click on the column 2 and choose insert effect, it'll insert effect between the node you right clicked on and the next node along the path. And if you right click and choose add effect, it adds an effect at the side of any effects that you already added rather than in that current path. You can also use the replace option by right clicking on an effect node and choosing replace effect and choosing a similar effect. And it replaces it in the path already connected to the previous and next nodes. That's how you add the effect nodes 
and connect them up. The first effect I'd like to show is the simple tile effect. And you can find this by right clicking on a node, choosing insert effect, background, tile. And to change the settings of an effect, you just double click it. Then you get this pop up with the options for that particular effect. So first I'll show you how you can scroll the buildings from last week and then we'll go through all the rest of the other options. So to scroll the buildings, you want to scroll horizontally, so we choose the horizontal mode. And that adds an infinite number of copies of this drawing to the left and to the right of the current drawing, with the distance between them set by this margin. So we set it to zero, the drawing should sit exactly side by side, but often you want a little overlap to reduce any possibility of there being a gap between drawings. So the way you can see this effect is if you turn on the preview mode by clicking this eye button at the top. Now if I use the animate mode, I can animate the position. I don't want to move the buildings up and down, that's north and south. So I'll tick this box to lock the north and south coordinates. And if I drag left and right, you can see that the buildings are connected to an infinite number of other copies of the building. And if I turn that off and zoom out, you can see how I've moved the drawing to the left of the screen, but with this effect enabled, there's other copies of the drawings all the way to the right and all the way to the left as far as you need. So I've set up this repeating animation. I'll delete the key that I've just added. And I'll set a default key in the first position by clicking the key button. I'll extend the drawing by right clicking and choosing edit cell numbers. And I'll repeat the drawing for up to frame 240, so that's 10 seconds. If I select on any frame in that column and then right click in the left hand side here, I can set auto markers. Now the auto markers are set to play the animation for 10 seconds. I don't want the drawing to scroll one drawing width off the screen every 36 frames, we'll say. So again, we'll click and drag on frame 36, that drawing, one full drawing width to the left. And as I mentioned last week, you can do this by eye or by typing in the east west box. The actual drawing width is 1920 pixels and because it's going to the left we'll make it negative 1920 press enter that's exactly one drawing to the left if i scrub through that animation you'll see in the 36 frames this drawing goes exactly off the screen and that means that the other tiled drawing will move onto the screen so that at frame 36 that copy of the drawing will be in the same position as frame one as i explained last week to make a repeating animation we need to add a key one frame before this position so that the animation repeats. So on frame 35, you can just press the key button and it adds a key. I can delete the key on frame 36 and then press this little button, this repeat widget, after the last frame. The animation will repeat up to the end of the scene. So if I go to the first frame and play that on repeat, without the effect being shown, you can see the buildings starting at the centre of the screen and scrolling all the way off. But if I enable preview for that effect and hit play, you'll see the buildings animated repeatedly. And that's how easy it is to create a repeating animation. That's tiling horizontally. You can also tile vertically. If you do that for the buildings, you can see the buildings stacked on top of each other. And I'll show you quickly how you might use that. Okay, so there's a very simple drawing of a building. I'm going to scroll this vertically. I'll bring this down to 36 frames. I'll add a key on the first frame. On frame 36, I'll animate this, move downwards one entire drawing height. And again, I'll tap the figure in the north-south area. So that's exactly right. That'll bring the drawing to exactly the same place. We want a key on the drawing before. Remove the key on 36, and then you can add a repeating cycle if you want to. And again, from frame 1 to 36, you just see it scroll down. But in the schematic view, if I insert tile effect, make it vertical, and then when we preview, you we'll see the building scrolling down infinitely. And you'll instantly notice that the drawing doesn't quite join up. And you can take your time to make sure your drawings do join up as they scroll around. But one built-in feature of this effect 
is that you can mirror the picture horizontally or vertically and that helps your drawing to join up so if I draw on this using the pen I go to the first frame and draw on the bottom here a big X and in the top window big circle as you preview it you can see the join is here so the circle gets repeated back to back now if you're going to do scrolling but using this mirror effect you don't want to scroll your drawing one drawing length or width off the screen you want to scroll it the length of two drawings off the screen otherwise you see a funny jump halfway through so to fix that all you need to do is in the final key instead of being one screen width minus 1080 we double it to minus 2160 and again we had a key on the drawing before and we move that key there and this is something that might not intuitively make sense right now but as you create your animations if you use the mirror effect you'll understand why you need to change it finally there's the tile option which tiles in both horizontal and vertical direction. If you draw an image of any size and set it just to the tile option, when you preview you'll see it's tiled horizontally and vertically. And this is where you might like to change the margin to space out the tiles more appropriately. And as before if you wanted to, you can animate them. Of course it's not got to be just a repeating background, you just animate a large distance like that and it'll animate the whole tile set. Now the simple tile effect will work perfectly well in most cases especially for horizontal or vertical scrolling but it's worth knowing about the enhanced features of the other tile effect Tile IWA. If I replace this one with tile IWA like that and as with a lot of the effects the IWA version has more options than the standard node and if you're wondering IWA are just the initials of the developer that don't really stand for anything else so what does this effect offer well quite a lot actually if I open that up okay well it seems like quite a few options here but they're very similar to the options on the standard tile effect. So let's get started. The first option is the input size and the bounded box is just an imaginary box around your drawn lines in the same way as the tile effect do the circles side by side the bounding box will do the same thing. If you use the camera box it chooses the camera size on the screen or the repeat but most of the time you'll want bounding box. Okay the next few options are fairly straightforward. They just break down the repeat in one of the four directions. So you can choose to have a single tile to the left of the current one, multiple tiles to the left, which repeats indefinitely. Likewise to the right, you can have one tile to the right, or multiple. So if you set them both to multiple, you've got the recurring scrolling background as we had before. If you want to, you can mirror them horizontally again. So you can notice how the horizontal mirror is down the center here. You can change the margin horizontally, separate from vertically. So horizontally you can make it zero so they touch, and vertically have a different number. And then we've got the same options for the vertical tiling. You can have one tile above the current one, one tile below it, or multiple in either direction. And again you can mirror them vertically as we could before and change their vertical margin. So the IWA tile mode just gives you more precise options where you can change the repetition in each of the directions. So there we go. And I'll be back soon with another video. So why not join me then? And remember, if you've got any questions or comments about this or have requests for other effects and future tutorials, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. So there's two different effects nodes you can use to create scrolling effects and why not give it a go and see how you can use these effects to more quickly create scrolling backgrounds 
or to use them to create tiled areas. I think you'll find them pretty easy to use. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.